we're going to talk about how to mix lye. Um, first thing we want to do is we're going to put our finger in here and it just feels warm and I have no sting and um, if we use the thermometer um, let's see. Um, see where we're at thermometer wise Okay, so we're at 120, and you could easily get it as low as 100, okay? And uh, we're putting our gloves on. We have our goggles over our eyes to protect our eyes. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that, and, and my stick blender's taped together. It just fell apart and tape. That's how it works. If you, um, This is just the oil. So you can see how that if you had the hole showing uh, of, above the oil line that it would spew at you. So you have to keep those holes or any, the grooves, you have to keep this below the, wa the oil line because now we're fixing to pour lye water in here and uh, I'm going to check to make sure I don't have any ice on the bottom because I put my lye water in the refrigerator. Uh, it's been in there for a couple of days and I don't have any ice in the bottom. I had a big issue with ice once. <coughs> so it's about a lot better to check before you do it. And then you just pour and have it blended. And there you go. And we want to get it out to the last drop if we can. Alright, and we don't have any like shiny oil thing floating on the top. It's uh, all well blended. I'm keeping my stick blender handy because I'm going to need it to put the milk in in just a minute. And that's how you mix the lye water, um, and it is uh, 2.23, so we're going to say I started this about 2.20. So 2.20 is the, the starting time for making homemade goat's milk soap. I'm going to go get the milk. We're going to wait three to five minutes and then put it in. Oh, turn the crock pot on low. Okay, it is... 228 so that means it's been five minutes since I stopped mixing the lye with the the lye water with the oils so now I'm putting the milk in the milk was frozen fresh from the from the um, the uh, goat creamy blend you can see it's well blended like a custard we'll get this out of the way for the moment we will need it a little bit later possibly sometimes it happens sometimes it don't we'll just wait and see the thing that you knew that it was uh, is see how now now it's starting to become a thicker custard and it'll do this because of the sugar content in the milk but um, this right here is um, what you want if your soap starts to get thick if you see it start coming to trace or thicken on you then you've got to hurry and get your milk in before five minutes and depending on the base oils that you decide to use will determine how fast it will come to trace so you'll have to learn your recipe I will be providing a recipe now one other thing 
Um, this was our container that our milk was in. I put half the water that it called for and then all of the lye in here. So half the water, all of the lye, and then the other half of water I used in milk. So I put, instead of letting lye touch my, my milk and destroy it uh, first thing, I let it at least have time to react with the oils some before and lose some of its power before it touched my milk. So it's just a, trying to keep the milk from being so eaten on by the lye. Okay, so all half the water with all of the lye, mix, put in the refrigerator till good and cold, uh, or put in an ice bath. Uh, until cold and then your milk I have I keep mine frozen but you just want cold milk okay just cold milk not room temperature uh, you want cold milk that helps to keep it from getting too hot in here you keep if everything's in a cool state of mind then your your milk is less likely to burn okay this is what we call coming into jail see that um, that right there is coming into jail now sometimes it will come into jail in one of those little round crock pots and pop straight up out of the crock pot so I like to take one of these cake icing knives stainless steel cake icing knives and I like to do what I call the tic-tac-toe method that way it can breathe through those cracks from the bottom because it's cooking down here more than it's cooking uh, on the top so also uh, you can do a little ram around the top as well and that causes it to breathe more and you won't end up burning your soap on the bottom because you still see a solid layer on the top and you don't realize that it's already turned to soap on the bottom um, I forgot to show you, I like to dig out a little hole sometimes on the goat's milk soap. Um, so, and, and then just put this back down on top. And now, I can see, whoop, hang on. And now I can see exactly what's happening on the very bottom of the soap. Okay, it's 256. It's been cooking on low. It's completely come out of jail. See how it has this like oatmeal consistency? When you get that, then, and you're completely out of jail, you've scooped around, you're completely out of jail stage, you're in liquid soap stage, uh, all of it's turned golden, and no more white stage white lumps of gel. Then I'm going to um, bring it back to a soap consistency from this oatmeal consistency with my stick blender. You don't do it like this like you do when you're mixing. You go up and down motion. So now we're back to soap consistency. So now we're going to add our super fats or what I call super floating oils. Um, this is your soap, the lye is dead. You can take this out, wash with it, put it on your skin. It's not gonna sting you, it's not gonna burn you. Uh, the lye is dead. So this is coconut oil, shea butter, olive oil, glycerin, and vitamin C, I mean vitamin C, vitamin E. So we're gonna mix that in. That lump of shea butter will take a few minutes to, uh, to melt. So we're just gonna stir it and we're gonna turn our crock pot off. All right, so this is just a loose stir 
uh, just to let the shea butter be melting, we're going to come back. Okay, this is an oats and honey soap. And um, so I've got my natural honey out here. And that's about four tablespoons. And that's about six. And this is a double batch. It does 44 bars of soap. So there's our honey in. And now we're going to put in a cup. And this is a cup. So if you were doing a half a batch or a single batch, it'd be a half a cup. This is a cup of organic oats. And now I'm going to stir that in. along with our shea butter as it has been melting. I'm going to run down the sides to help try to get that in. Get the powder off the edge there. You have to dig around the edges real good because the oats will hide down in the, down the corners and the crevices of your pot. You really have to dig your, your edges up good. Okay, so now our soap is completely ready and done. Um, and we are at 259. Um, at this point, you could cool it to 160 degrees. And let's see what temperature it is now. We're looking at nearly 180. So if you were going to cool this, you would sit your pot to where it's cracked. So I have ventilation here and here. And you're going to stir it about every three or four minutes because otherwise it gets crusty on the top sometimes. So you have to stir it regular and that also helps to pull the heat up. So if you reduce the heat to 160 degrees in your crock pot, then you would be able to add scent. This is an unscented soap, so I am not going to add scent. Okay, so now we're going to put our soap in the molds. And one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two. Two. These are little half spoonfuls, as you can see. One, one. I'm going to take my spatula. With goat's milk soap, you can do this with a spatula. Uh, it is more uh, lucid or uh, flexible than your hot process soap. I've scraped up my leftovers. When you cool it to add color to it, um, sometimes it'll make it a little bit less flexible, but overall, uh, goat's milk soap is just one of the most flexible soaps you can make. So we've banged out the air. And you can put a little swirl to the top if you want. 
I'm using a long a spoon with a long handle called a tea spoon. Sometimes you have to shift it. It'll when you do the spoon, it pull, makes a pile on this side. Okay, so there you have an oats and honey goat's milk soap. You'll want to cut this tomorrow after it's sit in here for at least 10 to 12 hours. And once you cut it, you'll set it out to where it's not touching each other and let it cure for five to seven days. Then you can package it and start using it or sell it.